economics. Economics is a social science that studies choice and scarcity. Macroeconomics. This is the study of the economy as a whole, looking at aggregate measurements like GDP, inflation, unemployment, and fiscal and monetary policy. It's kind of zoomed out. Microeconomics. This is zoomed in. We're studying individual firms and markets and behaviors. Things like a monopoly or one farmer. Scarcity. We have unlimited wants and desires, but limited resources. Two big ones here are money and time. We don't have enough of both. Four factors of production. Land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship. L-L-C-E. Entrepreneurship, this is like business smarts. Think about Steve Jobs or Elon Musk or Oprah. Mixed economy. It's a blend of capitalism and government intervention. It's not a command economy, and it's not a pure market economy. It's a mix of both, mostly capitalism, but there's some government intervention. Again, this is what we see in the United States and most economies in the world. Opportunity cost, really important word in econ. This is what you must give up in order to gain something else. For this example, it's what you sacrifice in order to gain another good. Take a look. This country or business can make either 10 shoes or 5 hats. That means if they make one hat, they gave up two shoes. That's just the unit rate. So what's their opportunity cost of a hat? Two shoes. Efficiency. This is the goal of economics. There's no way to make anybody better off without making anybody else worse off. However, it's not necessarily fair. It's efficient. Capital and capital goods. Big magic words in macroeconomics. Remember this. Capital is the productive equipment, machines, or technology. Investments in capital stock drives productivity and it creates growth. Remember that. Capital stock. This does not mean stocks and bonds. It's productive equipment. Absolute advantage. You are capable of producing more but it doesn't really tell you anything about specialization or trade. It's really not that interesting. It just means you got a bigger population or bigger economy. Comparative advantage, on the other hand, is really interesting. This is when you have the ability to produce something at a lower cost. Look here, country A and country B. Country A can produce a car, but they have to give up five bikes to do so. Country B, on the other hand, they got to give up 10 bikes. So who has the lower opportunity cost? Well, it would be country A. So what should they make? They should make cars. Guess what country B should make? Bikes. It's always the opposite, by the way. Terms of trade. This is the price of a good in terms of how much it can be exchanged for when trading with other countries or people or businesses. The trick here is compare the domestic opportunity cost of one good between two countries. Any number between those two opportunity costs is going to be an acceptable terms of trade. The law of demand. This states that there's an inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded. Demand, therefore, is downward sloping. Take a look. At P1, we have a quantity demanded of Q1. That's not very much. It's a high price. That makes sense. What about a low price like P2? Ah, lots of quantity demanded. When we change that price, by the way, we move along the curve. It's not more demand. It's more quantity demanded. Law of supply. This is the opposite. There's a direct relationship between price and quantity supplied. Supply is upward sloping. Again, we move along the line. As we increase price, that yields greater quantity supplied. The substitution effect. This is caused by a change in quantity demanded for the good that has become relatively cheaper. It's one of the reasons we see downward sloping demand curves. The income effect. This is a change in quantity demanded caused by a change in the purchasing power, that's the ability to buy something with money, resulting from a product's new, probably lower, price. When things get cheaper, we can buy more of them. Again, this is not more demand, it's more quantity demanded. The difference between quantity supplied versus supply and quantity demanded versus demand. Here we go. This is important. 
A change in price. This is what causes a change in quantity demanded or quantity supplied. It does not change demand and it does not change supply. A change in supply or demand is created by any change in the shifter. We'll come back to those. Equilibrium. Equilibrium is efficient. It's awesome. This happens when quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. Upward sloping supply, downward sloping demand, and where they meet, we have PE, price at equilibrium, and QE, quantity at equilibrium. Again, QD equals QS, nice. So price ceiling. This is a government mandated maximum price that sellers can charge. This is trying to protect consumers. It's a type of price control and they create shortages. Look here, the market wants to operate at PE. Can it? No, the highest price they're allowed to charge is PC. And at PC, we see not much quantity supplied, that's QS, but a lot of quantity demanded, that's QD. This creates a shortage. What's it look like in a store? Lots of customers, but they're totally sold out of this stuff. Price floor, this is the opposite. This is a government mandated minimum price that sellers can charge. It's a type of price control, and this is trying to protect producers. These create surpluses. Again, the market wants to work at PE, can it? No, the lowest price they can charge is P sub F. This creates a surplus where quantity supplied is way bigger than quantity demanded. That distance there is your surplus. What's the store look like? Lots of goods, full shelves, no customers. The price is too high. A surplus. Again, quantity supplied bigger than quantity demanded. Anytime price is above equilibrium, you should have a surplus. Again, often caused by price floors. Look here. PE is what the market wants to charge. Well, what if this corn producer tries to charge P1? They're going to see a surplus. That price is too high. QS, much bigger than QD. Shortage, opposite. QD, bigger than QS. Price is below equilibrium level. If this corn farmer charges a really low price, what's gonna happen to them? Well, they're immediately gonna sell out of their good and they're gonna have a massive shortage, which basically tells them, hey, I should increase the price We'll move back up along these curves, both the demand curve and supply curve, until we get back to equilibrium. The law of diminishing marginal utility. This states that eventually all goods produce less and less satisfaction with added consumption. Think about the last bag of chips you ate. Eventually, those chips don't taste very good. You start to get kind of sick. The five shifters of demand and the five shifters of supply. You gotta know these. Here they are, for demand. The price of related goods. This is complements and substitutes. Complements you consume together, substitutes take the place of each other. Change in income. If you have more money, you're going to be, be, be buying more of a normal good. However, if you have more money, you're gonna probably stop buying the inferior goods. You'll prefer the normal goods. Changes in tastes and preferences. This is often affected by things like advertising. Change in expectations, tricky one. It's all about the future price. If you think the good that you wanna buy is going to be more expensive in the future, well, you wanna buy it today. You're gonna to demand more today, and we're always graphing today. Number of consumers. This is the population. More people, more demand. The shifters of supply, input prices. Big ones here would be oil, electricity, and wages. That's the price of labor. The price of related goods, substitutes in production can be a little confusing. Here's a great example. You run a factory that makes basketballs, but you hear soccer balls can actually charge a higher price. What would you prefer to make? Well, you're going to prefer to start making the soccer balls. You can easily switch your factory over to that. So you'll supply less basketballs and more soccer balls. Technology means you can make more of a, a good for the same cost as before. That's an outward shift of supply. Change in expectation, similar to above. If you think you can sell the good for more in the future, will you sell more or less today? Well, you're going to supply less today. You'll wait until the future, then you'll supply more. Number of producers, that's just more factories or firms opening up in your industry. Double shifts, one of the trickiest things in the whole unit. I'll show you a quick example. This is when supply and demand both shift at the same time. Price can either increase or decrease or be indeterminate, that's what the question mark means. Quantity could increase or decrease or be 
indeterminate. It depends on the size of the shifts. Here in the market for coffee, let's say consumers find themselves with a lot more income. That's a huge shift of demand. We'll call that D2, big shift of demand. On the other hand, there was a little bit better weather for coffee producers, but only a little bit. So notice we've got a kind of a small increase in supply, call that S2. Both of them are shifting out. Now, when this happens, what happens to price at equilibrium? What happens to quantity at equilibrium? We want to look at this point here. That's our new equilibrium. And at it, we see a much higher price because both of them uh, have increased, although the, the supply, which actually pushed down a little bit on price, didn't have nearly a, the same effect as the demand curve. So what happened to quantity? Increase in quantity, increase in price. But what if this was the opposite? What if it was a huge supply shift and a small demand shift? Well, in that case, price would have actually gone down because huge supply, small demand. It would have been over here. What happens in both, though? Quantity is definitely increasing. So we can guarantee quantity will increase. We're not so sure about price. Price is indeterminate, but quantity will increase. Okay, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching.